Ever since I began spear fishing, it's been a goal of mine to spear a Kubera snapper in my own backyard. This feat hasn't been easy, but from learning about their behavioral patterns, where they live, and determining where and when we should go to have our best chance is a story on its own. In this video, you guys will be witnessing the story unfold of my first ever success on one of these elusive and rare snapper here in the Gulf of Mexico. That's crazy. So blue. Here in Texas and Louisiana area, these Kubera snapper come few and far between. So to even find one takes a lot of searching. There's nowhere near the quantities as say in South Florida or the Bahamas. So I'm loading up my spear gun here. We hop in and the water is crystal clear. Even the current is super minimal. It's not too often that it's this nice in the Gulf of Mexico. Right away, we are greeted with tons of fish, and the clear water just makes the experience so much better. There's heaps of tarpon around, and usually, if I'm lucky, I see one or two, maybe. But this day, they're just stacked up. It's unreal. There's even mondo mangroves up 10, 15 feet from the surface. Here is my first drop of the day. I almost couldn't even believe it. On my very first dive of the trip, I shot what I came for, a Kubera snapper. And on the way up, we saw a massive amberjack at like 50 feet. I rarely ever see these things shallower than 100 feet, at least in Texas. But let's just say the stoke was real and I could not be happier with this trip. And it's just beginning. We just smoked a freaking Kuber snapper. My first one ever. Oh my gosh. Not a giant, but this is a, a great eating size. Oh my gosh. And then we saw Amber Jack come up. That was insane. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you guys the stoke. This trip, our goal, or at least one of our goals was big, or really any Kubera snapper, and we just got it done. Make sure he's in the boat. Oh my gosh, check that out. First Kubera snapper ever. First dive of the day. Plugged him. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna get back in the water. Go spot Fisher. There's big fish here. I 
I did some research after this dive trip and I read from the University of Southern Mississippi's Gulf Coast Research Laboratory that and it quotes, tarpon spawn offshore in warm, isolated areas, usually in late spring to late summer and probably in association with a full moon or new moon. So that must be the reason they are out here in the quantities that they are. Much like the tarpon, these Kubera snapper also spawn midsummer to late summer around a full moon. As I mentioned, there's not a whole lot in our area. So the fact that we're even seeing any could just be because they're spawning. So on this dive, we're pushing down farther to see if there's any fish lurking in the deeper areas of this rig. A lot of the times, those big fish will hang down in that murk layer, but when you get down right above it, they'll come up off the bottom to check you out. Nice cobia here. I really wasn't expecting to see one, to be honest, but came up out of that murk layer and I put a really nice shot. Almost a stone shot, but I definitely uh, hurt this thing, that's for sure. It was bleeding real, real hard, and you can tell just on the swim up that this thing was hurt. And uh, luckily it wasn't giving me too much issues. But if you know anything about cobia, they seem dead until you try to grab them or put them in the boat. And that's when you know that they are very much still alive. Second dive of the day, Cobia. Got our first Kubera snapper ever. First drop of the day, 50 something feet. And then that ling we just shot was at 63. So whenever we're shooting fish on a rig and continuing to dive it, I like to work different water columns. This will allow me to find fish I haven't seen yet, or maybe see fish that haven't been spooked or seen us. The first dive where we shot the Kubera was around 40 foot, the Cobia was at 63. And since I already shot fish at those depths, I'm now going to push deeper to find something else. And on this dive, despite it being my third of the day, is down to 80 foot. I was feeling really good, nice and relaxed at the surface. so. On my descent, I decided to just keep swimming down. And more often than not, like I said, when you are shooting fish on the rig and you decide to go deeper, it's gonna pay off. So here I'm kind of leveling out, scoping the area. That murk layer is quite a bit worse than I expected it to be. So I don't wanna to sink too far in it before I look around. Once you level off, I try to kind of drift into the rig like this, uh, looking inside to see if there's any fish kind of hanging behind a leg or any piece of structure uh, inside. So I get up to this leg, I grab on to control my buoyancy. We are pretty negative at this depth, and this really nice black margate cruises right up to me. They always do it, and I put a nice shot in the head and begin my ascent to the surface. If you watched the last video, the same exact situation happened where that black margate sees me, swims right up at me, and it gives me an easy shot. Mm -hmm. Woo! 
80 feet. Shot my PB. Black Margate, dude, that is a stud. Wow. Yeah, it kind of looked like a black drum from up above it. And it turned. And that's when I realized we're shooting this thing. And its air bladder is inflated, let me tell you. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I've made three dives today. Kubera, Lang, and now Black Margate. Woo! Nice. So while my dive buddy Fisher is on a dive, behind him a large school of Jack Cravel are just vortexing him. Amidst that school are a few rainbow runners right here. I've never really talked about them on the channel before, but they are one of the greatest fish to eat in the sea. They make amazing sashimi, that's raw fish. You can make them into sushi, uh, you can do ceviche, whatever you want, they're one of the best, hands down. And that's why I went down and shot this fish while he was on a dive. I don't see a whole lot, so when I do see him, I take advantage of it. This rainbow runner in particular is actually a stud, probably the biggest one I've ever speared. But unfortunately, I stopped paying attention for a minute and a barracuda beat me to it. You know, it's crazy. The last time I had an issue with a barracuda eating a fish while spearfishing was in the same exact situation. I had speared a rainbow runner. I thought we had it in the bag, but the barracuda had to come up and ruin it. Broke my line. I shot an African pompadour. Woo! Any more? Are there any other ones? Just one, just one. Dude, that was crazy. <laughs> Wait, let's give it Dude, he's sick. Yeah. That's the most wild of all stuff. Let's give him a second shot. Big one? He's good, yeah. I have to ask him all of them. Oh my god! Nice. I pulled and he pulled back. The line bus lock? Yeah, he's off. Oh. So back in the water, I'm using my backup gun here. It's a Rife Metal Tech 1. And right in front of the screen there is a large wad of mangrove snapper. Luckily for them, I'm not going after them today. We're going to be diving deeper, down, close to the bottom, to hopefully see another Kubera snapper. Now, I think these mangroves are spawning just like this harpin and kuberas this time of year. It seems to be a common trend with these fish. But just checking all the tarpon inside the rig there, they are just swarming in a massive vortex. I've never seen more tarpon in my life. But I keep pushing down. We're really gonna try to push the depths here and see what's on the other side of the rig. I haven't dove this part yet. And like I was saying, anything can swim up out of that murk layer. You just gotta get down there and be patient. I decided to level out at about 80, 81 feet because that murk just gets so bad. And if I go down in it, I'm not gonna be able to see anything. So I hold tight, hold onto the rig leg, and another Kubera snapper, bigger than the last one, comes in. I hesitate a little bit, but then I take the shot and it hits it far back and it runs, which is not good. I try to grab the line as fast as I can to keep this thing from tangling up, but it's too strong and I gotta get up to the surface. I burned a lot of oxygen, so we're just gonna have to see if we can pull it out on the next dive. It's not ideal to be shooting fish down that deep, especially when it's murky right past that depth. That Kubera just swam right in my face. I thought I was gonna put a herbin on it, but that's not how it worked out. Here's my second dive, my first attempt to recover the fish. I'm really just scoping it out, seeing where the line's tangled, and uh, kind of get an idea of what I'm going to have to do to retrieve this fish. Unfortunately, all I can see is the line going down into the murk layer, so I'm going to have to head back up to the surface, recoup, relax, and prepare for a deeper and longer dive. 
That line is just stuck on something down there. So here is my first recovery dive. I go down slow. I'm really trying to stay relaxed and composed. I'm not racing anything. I just need to get down here and hopefully see what's going on. And uh, I'm just gonna say right now, this is actually the deepest dive to date that I've ever made. I hit 93 feet. I go up to this platform and start to pull on the line. I didn't go any deeper because I couldn't see anywhere where I could hold on. I don't want to be free falling down there without anything to control my buoyancy. Also, the visibility went from like four feet to zero feet past 93 feet. And considering I've never even been that deep and all of the rig legs in the way that I have to maneuver around, it's like a jungle gym. I just did not feel uh, confident about pushing farther than this. As you guys can see, it's an abyss down there. You cannot see a single thing. And at 93 feet, I cannot see what that thing is tangled on, so I head back up to the surface. I'm gonna give it another shot. But at this point, I'm starting to become a little bit worried because I wasn't able to make any headway on untangling that line, and I couldn't even see the fish, so I have no idea how deep it's tangled at. My camera ended up dying. Uh, I made another dive down to 93 to see if I can do anything else. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get it out, but I did see another large cabera down in that Merclair, as well as an amberjack on my swim up. Well, I dove to 93 feet. How far is I figured out where it's stuck on. There's some horizontal pipes or deals down there. Yeah. But he went under and I couldn't see under there. It's a little bit murky from where I was at. Oh my gosh, dude. Well, two dives back to back, deepest ever. But that thing was, I don't know. I think I'd have to go to 115 foot to get a good look at oh. the angle. But I just don't feel comfortable doing that in murky water. But yeah, I was having trouble getting down to the depth just because I was trying to maneuver around all the rig legs so I couldn't just dive straight down. I was going down, turning, spinning, uh, changing direction. And by the time I got to 93, that's where that big, uh, there's a big uh, platform, I guess you can call it. Really? Yeah, it's kind of like this. It's all flat. And I was just laying on that, trying to pull on the line. See if I can shimmy that thing out, but didn't have any luck with that. So on the way back up, though, I saw another big amberjack. Could have been the same one we saw earlier, but big AJ. I really wish we had some scuba gear on the boat just to go recover that fish, or at least the shaft. A little while later, we moved spots, and me and Fisher actually were just trading off with his spear gun. And I want to point something out here. I'm diving down. I'm not really looking for anything in particular, uh, but there's just a ton of mangroves in front of me. And whenever there's a bunch of mangroves around, I don't really look at the individual fish uh, to maybe spot something a little bit different, like a dog snapper or maybe a similarly sized Kubera snapper, like that one that I just swam by. That was the fourth Kubera we saw on this trip. And I didn't even know I saw it. I swam right by it, but if you think about it, it was small and I wouldn't have even wanted to shoot it anyways because it was the size of those small average size mangroves and that fish has a lot of time to grow and it's going to get way bigger than that. So not really bummed about missing uh, the fish, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool that we saw another Kubera. Here's another cool dive. Uh, the fish I'm looking at right there is a squirrel fish, and 
I was kind of wondering what the heck it was doing out here. Usually these fish are sitting at 200 feet or deeper, but for whatever reason, this thing was up shallow on the oil rig by itself, just hanging out with all the other, other fish. But uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to film and show you guys all of the fish that kind of reside on the structure of the oil rig on the coral. There's Spanish hogfish, which are those yellow and gray fish. These mangrove snapper, of course. There's rock kind grouper. You guys are familiar with those. You've seen them in the last couple diving videos where we speared a few. They're super camouflaged, really good at hiding on the rigs. There's a couple flashing across the screen right there. There's barracuda hang out above the coral, making sure no one's slipping up and uh, presenting them an easy meal. And there's actually quite a bit more fish that you can't even see, those real small reef fish. But something that's interesting about this dive is that I was on top of this giant platform looking at all the fish while underneath it was a nice cubera that Fisher, my dive buddy, spotted and he only had to go to 20 feet to shoot it. Nevertheless, it was awesome. Easy landing job and made the trip. We both got cubera snapper. Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After hanging in the rig for a little bit, I head to the outside of the rig and I finally get my redemption on the Rainbow Runner. This one's not quite as large as the first one I shot, but at the end of the day, they're both gonna taste and eat the same. I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, hit that like button down below. It really helps the channel out. The more likes we can get, the more views we get, the more we can get out there. And that means we'll be able to do this more often. And ultimately, I would love to do this full time. And I really do enjoy making these videos and sharing them with you guys. So thank you all once again. Thanks for tagging along. And until next time.